we are privileged to have a swords, a Wu Tang swordsman here with us today. Um, he was gracious enough to come back after uh being here last time when his uh you know he was having technical issues, but he's went out. Fixed every goddamn thing. It's sa- his shit sounding like butter now. And uh, I'm about Damn. to eat that song. My bad. Right. Anyway, <laughs> uh, we're gonna bring the guard back. Oh, oh, oh! I just hit that with my with my um with my elbow. But digger, hang on. Yeah. He wasn't Uh-oh. looking up when you did it. Uh-oh. You ready? Nope. Yeah. No, I, I yeah. did it by accident. You ready? Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So listen, with no further ado, I don't want to keep the guy waiting anymore. Um, I'm so happy he came back. This is the second time that you know we had an interview that kind of because of technical difficulties, we had to uh redo it basically the first time I was with Royce the five nine thank you uh for coming back brother and so now this will be the second time thank you deck my brother for coming back with no further ado ladies and gentlemen to the not a mean god cast my brother inspector deck yes sir <laughs> what's good king thanks for letting me back in the door man you know I had to I had to go and shop it, man. Get a good mic and get a good setup, man. Oh, listen to you now, though. Listen to you now. Yeah, damn. They, said, they said it sounded like you was playing dice on the keyboard last week. <laughs> but yeah, now it might have sound better doing it in the train station, you know, <laughs> <laughs> on the track type of shit. It was <laughs> on the tracks. <laughs> but nah, we definitely appreciate you coming back through. Yes, um, back, and yeah, so, man. Your family here. So, like you were saying last week, <laughs> well, so like you we, went to the store. <laughs> wait, now nah, you're gonna have to bring it back from the beginning because I, I was late. What up, Dag? I was late last week. <laughs> they said literally as you was going, I was coming. <laughs> yeah, it was like when the elevator closed. You know what I mean? And the other elevator door opened. So when you left, that's when she came in. Shit, it was hilarious. That's yeah. funny. Up, so we can take it from the top now, though. No. Yeah. Let's take it from the top. Uh so so wait a minute. So then that means you have to re I have to uh you have to redo the thing where you let I became an honorary Wu Tang member. You have to do it over. Oh uh, go ahead. You say that. Yeah. So yeah. Inspector Deck, I would like you to like initiate me, please. Thank you. Yes. Well, tell them the story. Oh okay. tell them the story of why you think you should even be initiated in the first place, guys? Well, I should be initiated because I live by the Wu Tang. I am a diehard fan. That's real talk. I when I when I'm performing on stage, you know, everybody goes, "What music you want?" I go, uh, "Wu Tang." They put me. It's either you what it's something from you guys' solo album, or whenever I leave my stage, I always play Triumph because it's a triumph. And everybody, whenever my friends talk about Wu Tang, they always bring me up because I don't play. And my birthday cakes for the past couple of years have been Wu Tang cakes. And you oh, see, so your Godfrey yeah. logo is my like Godfrey, some sort of my Godfrey logo was... is like a and mm-hmm. mathematics saw it and said, I approve of it. So they took the Wu Tang symbol and made it a G. That's dope. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. It's dope, yo. Math so, approved it, then it's official because yeah, math- mathematics came on right. my podcast and said, yeah, you good, dude. I was like, that's awesome. You know what I'm saying? So and then you said Math- Method Man gave you a dubbing. And yes. Method Man, when I was at Sirius XM, before I got fired, <laughs> he came on my show and said, yo, God, you an honorary boots. I got it on my thing to prove it. And so now another important member <laughs> Of the right. Wu-Tang class. So you would like to get dubbed. Yes. By another important. Yeah, about to knight. Yes, yeah, so you want to get knighted by the Inspector Deck right the now. Inspector Deck, Wu-Tang General. I officially mm. knight God Free, the Free God, as an official Wu-Tang member. Oh! Wow! 
respect you, baby. <laughs> like you said, I, I've, seen, I've seen them Wu Tang cakes, man. Them cakes is dope. I thank you, and I'm. A, it's every year. Hang on, I I, I get Wu Tang lattes. <laughs> wait, 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 no, hold up. I got a really cool story to share with you guys, and this all just transpired in the last 24 hours. Mm. So this, check it out, right? So this is a picture of a vegan coquito latte. Whoa! That wow. they oh, hang on, hold up, hold put put that up again. That's dope. So this wow. is a this is a this is a vegan coquito latte that they serve at the grind shop in Jersey City. So I tweeted a picture of it and was like, "Step your coffee up, bitches." And Pita, Pita mm -hmm. tweeted me and was like, Oh, anytime the anytime somebody throws the Batman signal up or something, you're you know you're saving the day, but you're you're the real hero because you're saving cows everywhere. Now Pita got like <laughs> millions of followers, right? So then I retweeted it and was like, Yes, Wu Tang clan are superheroes. So everybody started like chiming in to Pita, like, how you going? How you gonna mistake the woo symbol for the Batman yeah. for the back signal? So, so, so I'm glad you showed us that. Thank you. That was dope. But yeah, yeah, that, 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 kinda, that brings us back to where we started last week when we're talking about Wu Tang cakes. We're talking about Wu Tang lattes. We're talking <laughs> about fucking Wu Tang tattoos <laughs> and all kinds of Wu Tang fanaticism. Mm -hmm. okay. Like to the point where Wu Tang is one of the most cultish hip hop groups that's ever existed. Like, like, like the the that's a fact the cultural transformation that they put on on the people and and, and it's worldwide. Like I've seen it worldwide. Like no other um hip hop group ever. And I asked him. You know, what did he think it was? What do you, what is it about that? that that's Wait, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt your wisdom. Am I allowed? I was literally just recording before I got on here. So my mic might be fine. Is it good? Fine. Okay. Somebody called me loud throat. I, I wasn't sure. No, that's just because you loud throat because they they real followers and they know you got a loud throat. Okay, throat. I just wanted to make sure I was, you know. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm sorry. Please I, proceed. I um, <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, we were just talking about just being so culturally transformative, and and did they kind of did you know it was gonna? Well, I don't think anybody could have known that. But like after seeing it, what did you think it was? And 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 what kind of feeling is that to like be like, damn, niggas is making Wu Tang lattes out this bitch? <laughs> yeah, that's big time, man. Like for me, I'm from a I'm from a small neighborhood in Staten Island, bro, called Park Hill. It's five major projects, and the whole island is like this. And to make it from there, see the places I've seen and places I've been, right? I can't put it into words, bro. Like it would it would take me to write a book. You know what I'm saying? But to give you the short story for me, I'm still overwhelmed right now. Like I'll be seeing I'll see next week I'll see somebody with an old dirty tattoo taking up their whole thigh. You know what I'm saying? Like All right. it's always something that reminds me how how big this thing got. Like Wesley Snipes said it's bigger than Nino Brown. It's big business. Like, I go anywhere and we there. Anywhere. Uh, yeah. Damn. What about overseas, third world, Gold Coast, name it. Everywhere I've touched down, I've seen it. And it it's remarkable. Bro. Even during the COVID, they said, uh, COVID is not, it's temporary. Wu Tang is forever. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen right. those signs? Wow! There's signs around the city going COVID yeah. is temporary. Like Wu -Tang insert is forever. insert word is yeah. temporary. Wu Tang is forever. I, I've, I've seen it a, a few different. It's bananas. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's into politics. You know, it's it's it's, it's into fashion. It's into everything that 
is us. Everything that we made popular. You know what I'm saying? That's why I think the travel so far, like you go hood to hood, it's somebody that, yo, he remind me of that. Yo, he remind me of you, God. He remind me of Matt. You know, we had, you know, everybody's clique, everybody's crew. We represented somebody in that crew. Right. It's almost like you had the whole hood in that crew, like or like the lead representatives of the hood, right. all kind of in one crew, like including the ill, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. ill smart nigga, like because because yeah, he was, was an ill smart nigga, like like. Make no mistake about it. Everybody act like Dirty was crazy, and I built with the guard. Like he right. knew his lessons backwards and forwards on some super deep, analyze them shits, four dimensional type of way. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I looked at Dirty, ba the old Dirty Bastard, as the drunken master. Like mm. just you yeah. know what I mean? He knew exactly yeah. what he was doing, but yeah. he fooled you. By looking like, and I, I think, and I, I'm, I don't know if I'm wrong, but I think that you guys, the the greatest thing that really kept us, kept me, it was the combination of hip hop and martial arts, because who doesn't love martial arts if you're black? Who doesn't? We all do. I studied martial arts for a long time, and we all grew up on the Bruce Lee. So did, was that was all your styles based on like martial arts, different styles, like Five Deadly Venoms type of shit? Not, not necessarily. Like, I'm gonna give you a story that nobody gave, right? Yeah, that's what we like. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, and hold up, digger, don't you? Uh, shut up, shut up. I'm not gonna kill him. <laughs> You're gonna be trying to kill him. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot killer, yo. Yes. We, be, we be having guests on here, like I'm about to reveal my deepest, darkest secrets to you. I'm like, no, 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 take it to your grave. <laughs> What's wrong what with you? What are we doing this for? <laughs> Anyway, continue, my brother. I want to get it correct. So repeat the question. Repeat the question. I want to. I want to worry. See, you. you killed the scoop. Look at you. Nah. Here we go. <laughs> I said the five deadly venoms. Was this based on like the five deadly venom? Because all your styles are so different. It reminds me of different martial arts styles. Right. You know what I mean. So now, RZA and Ghosts were the ones, and mathematics too. And a, and, a, and a host of others, you may not know their names, but say, take Wizard Ghost and Mathematics. These dudes had collections and collections and collections of martial arts flicks. Knew all the actors, knew about Tony Ja, everybody before they even blew up like that. And um, we used to go to Wizard House and we used to just watch different, you know, combined with the Saturday matinee when we was kids. Right. Time, in New York, it was Channel 5. You know, you used to show the Masterpiece Theater and all that. But yeah. growing up, we used to kick each other, chop the shit out of each other, try to move on each other and all that. But the Wu-Tang whole origin and, and all the karate and where that comes from, that was a slang word that RZA and Ghost used. That mm. everything was Wu-Tang. So if shit was fly, it was Wu-Tang. Mm. Mm. With his hands, he was wool. You know, I, 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 I'm from Park Hill, Stapleton. Props to y'all. That's a Stapleton thing. You know what I'm saying we came so that, from, with that that whole word, that whole yo, that shit is Wu Tang. That started in Stapleton. Yes. Oh wow. Copy. Yes. That's a, that's a Stapleton and thing. And Ghost from Stapleton. You know what I'm saying. And Ghost uh, from Stapleton, correct? Yeah, Ghost is originally from Stapleton. Uh -huh. So. That was their word that they thought they threw around for, for dope shit. So when we come from Park Hill, me, Meth, you got dirty Jizzle would come from Brooklyn. Right. Meet up at Rizza House. And it's like, yo, man, we about to do some Wu Tang shit. Mm. You know? And it was already in the air before the, the crew came together and all that. Just by having the karate flicks and learning what they was doing, like right. the hood of it, you know. I, I, you know, I will avenge my brother. You, you know, teacher, you killed my teacher. I'm like, Go to school out. Mm. You know, so we was we was doing it like that. You know, we, we we looking out for each other. We Wu Tang and Clammy's family and right. But in the beginning, bro, we had a thousand motherfuckers on stage. I ain't know who. Was who. I remember. Neighborhood, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and all that ninja way of life, and you know, we came out with masks on the on the thirty six chamber album. 
can't see our faces, you know. Right. Ghost had an actual mask on. Ghost had an actual ghost. <laughs> like, I was like, yo, homie, I'm showing his face. Like, like, yeah. like, <laughs> exactly, bro. Like, I was like, Good old days. Fuck? Yeah, we was taking that mentality and trying to bring it to the, you know, to the far front. Like, I sat down in a small, we got to go up against the Bronx, Manhattan, you know, right. Queens, Brooklyn. You know, we, we, we the only ones really representing at that time, too. We had to come out with something new. Props to RZA, man. He was the smart one. You know what I'm saying? I like to consider myself smart as well, but he had that whole vision. Like, yo, I'm gonna get everybody together. We're gonna take these you know, samples from these from these, movies, from these movies, I mean, you know, and and you know wanna fight, fight with me, one to one, man to man, you know, all the skits. Yeah, and stuff. right. That, that that was all part of Wu-Tang being fly shit. We wanted to be flyer than anybody else, like lyrically though, you know. So then so then at some point as you progressing, was it like, okay, hang on, I we could like we could take little characters and shit like like okay, you god could be the golden arms, like you know what I mean? Like cause golden arms, that's a that's a that's a movie, like that's a character, like you know what I mean? Ghostface killer, all of these. You know what I mean? The chef, all of these different um characters. Like, wh- when did y'all say, you know what? We should kind of, we should really lean into this shit hard. That's yeah. For me, I, it's hard to pin- pinpoint the right moment. But if I look back, I can say Ghost. I think, or even Meth. Ghost and Meth around the same time. Ghost was like, I'm Ghostface Killer. He <laughs> wanted to be that dude in the movie that just, you don't even see him. You just get hit with something. <laughs> and then you come to face, right? When you, uh, 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 you know, <laughs> when, you, when you like that. <laughs> Meth was Method Man in the street. You know, Meth used to, you know, how back in the you know, early 90s, niggas used to come through with whips and all that, had the sounds booming. This nigga got a rhyme. Car come by for a hot 30 seconds. Mm. You know, fit, like <laughs> 10, 12 bars on you, real quick. He was one of the niggas that put the beat on his chest and right. swag the zipper. Right. Like Bobby McFerrin type shit. <laughs> yeah, 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 like he was he naturally gifted, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he, he was doing it way back then. You know what I'm saying? He was uh, one of them other dudes that had songs circulate circulating in the hood on tapes and you know, Capadonna, was a Raekwon. They all had little freestyles and things they used to do while well, I hooked up with them. And I knew everybody from but you wasn't necessarily uh doing it yourself. When did you start really going from um you know just a hip hop fan to, to a, a motherfucker that actually started getting on his pen game and all that? Yeah, I, I got on my pen game in jail, man. I got when I did my little two to three, <laughs> you know, it was one to three, but it wanted to be two to chase. So you know, also where, did, where, did, where did they send you? Where'd you go to? I went to Elmira, oh, you know. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, the second time I went down to Monterey, I did the shop program, the military. Ah, uh, yeah. It was, mm-hmm. smart. it was a nonviolent crime, so, like, whatever, man. You know, I, right. I'm mentally strong. I could, you know what I'm saying? Walk through this. You know, right. The street. But, you know, in jail, it was like, I was up uh, in Albany, and it was like, yo, who was rapping in the, in the pens? You know, and they had this thing where they was battling on Fridays. <laughs> mm. So one day I just decided to write something. I never really wrote, but I've been around you know, Jizza and Rizza. And it was like, okay, let me think like if I was them. <laughs> you know, Capadonna, people like that. So you know, I might have even bit some of their lines. I ain't going to lie to y'all. <laughs> <laughs> um, but just to get in the contest, you know, I'm, I'm just... Right. <laughs> trying to occupy my time doing time and just doing it day after day it started coming you know and um it used to be these books i can't remember these books growing up you know like late 70s 80s it used to make you read the essay and then do the questions at the end right like 10 questions at the end of the chapter to see what you know about what you read probably those scholastic uh 
think I know what you're talking about. But yeah, type of Reader's Digest. That's what yeah, mm-hmm. shit like that. Uh huh. Used to read those joints, you know. So I just was like acting like I was writing a story, and you know, thinking like I was Capadonna or something like that. But anyway, that's where I started really writing, actually mm-hmm. put into the paper. I didn't take it serious until you God came to me like, yo, you know, you took it serious, bro. You can be kind of nice with it. You know, you're saying, you're saying some stupid shit. And um, I was like, all right. Started writing with you God and Meth. And um, that was that. You God got locked up. Me and Meth tried to form a group before we tang with a couple of dudes, older cats from my hood. What was the name of that group? We didn't have a name. We didn't have a name, man. We was traveling up to like, 158 from the Bronx. Go see my man Lou. He's a Lou Specsky, Granville, mm-hmm. aka the Disco Tithers. They was like a hip hop type of, you know, like like Divine Sounds was for Brooklyn. Right, 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 right. You know? That's what's up. That's what's so up. when you, you your name about to say you got some of the best verses in the crew, and you and and you come in the <laughs> yeah you came in the tail end of. Uh, yeah. What? What? Where did you get the the name? Because they named themselves. How'd you come up with your name? Yeah, that was a name I wrote graffiti with. You know what I'm okay. I was just writing graffiti with it, and um, Inspector just came when I went to jail. <laughs> it's okay. Like, Yo, oh shit! No, first time in jail. He got stabbed in the neck on my way in. Mm. You know, got the got the metal sticking out his neck, and mm. I'm just. Nigga, I'm going in here for like one to three, you know? So I'm just like bracing myself for that. So I had to learn on the fly, like things about jail. Like you know, when you see somebody, you in the day room, you watching the TV, homeboy don't like what's going on on the TV. Get up and change the channel. Next thing you know, he get crashed upside the head with the mop ring, <laughs> you know? And it was like, that's what Ghost said. You crashed in your head, mop ring your style. You know, like, yo, know, going to jail, man, opened my eyes to a lot of shit that the streets didn't teach. And the streets will teach you how to get money, how to be, how to, how to be a gangster or portray a gangster. But I met the real gangsters in there, bro. Like, just take a bent piece of the bed and rake you across your face 17 times. Shoot. Nuts. <laughs> The science of being an inspector is one who's doing the knowledge. You see, an inspector is doing the knowledge to some shit. Mm-hmm. You know, checking out how shit works. Let me let me inspect this. Let me take a look at this you gotta, and, you and evaluate it. So when you're young, you think you know everything. That's that's the shit that gets you locked up in the first place. You know what I'm saying? So when you're in jail, you got time to, to think and, and understand what got you there. And so that's what I was doing, man. I was just paying attention. I was move, seeing who was moving with who. Oh, this dude is with that dude. You know, you got to understand your surroundings. Man. Yeah. You can't, somebody offer you something, man. You can't just be taking somebody's offer. Now you, you know. You know what I'm saying? I get yeah. a pack of cigarettes. You know, you, now you owe that. So it's lessons to be learned and all that. So when I came home, my movements was different. You know, first person I got up with was you, God. Um, he gave me that name. Oh, wow. Yeah. God gave me the name. It's like, That's yo, <laughs> head on swivels. It's- yeah, yeah. Like you said, there's all types of niggas in the crew. Dirty is perceived as the wow, crazy. But he knows what the fuck he's doing, man. Yeah, everybody, <laughs> knows they, you know, Wizard's the smart one, you know, they ain't ghosts. Hood niggas, you know what I'm saying? Everybody plays every role though every day. You know what I'm we all hood niggas, we all street smart, we all sports smart. It's a different roles we play every day. You know, you choose what you do. Yeah. You go out there and rob a bank, you gonna rob a bank. <laughs> I just had a flashback of my my first live encounter with old dirty. It was hilarious. <laughs> he, he was he, he was at the studio. Now um he was talking. I I I got off the elevator. I'm just walking in. I walk up behind him. He's telling the story to somebody like, Yeah, I tried fuck the bitch in the ass. <laughs> and, uh, 
And I was just like, <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> and then he, and then he seen me, and then he seen me and just completely froze, like, just turned, did a whole 180, like, oh my God, Queen, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean any disrespect. Queen, peace, Queen. I'm like, it's, it's breast. It's okay. I'm in the studio with dudes all day. Daddy, I've heard it all. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. That's dirt dog. Nice, nice to meet you. <laughs> That's broad daylight, though, you know, like, no, no shame. No shame. What's that? Gary. That was literally the words coming out of his mouth as the elevator opened. <laughs> Shit. I'm just like, <laughs> clutch my pearls. <laughs> you you oh, hilarious. Said before that. Let me I, ask. I, you. I'm scared to, I shudder to think. God bless the day. <laughs> Yeah, God bless my brother. I love him. It's so dirty, man. No doubt. Backbone of this shit, you know? I know a lot of brothers, um, a lot of brothers in the Wu had knowledge of self. Did you have knowledge of self as well? Yeah, see, for me, I never studied 120 lessons. I never studied 120. But I, I've studied enough to understand what my brother's conveying to me. I used to build with RZA just an everyday master killer. And, um, you know, they used to basically give me the, the degrees firsthand. So I learned kind of not studying the lessons, but studying their ways and actions. Right. I was able to put that into my life. So, you know, that's one reason why I never claim to say, yo, I'm supreme. A law. Uh -huh. This, that, our law. Yeah, you know, so I didn't want to disrespect. So I just basically took the knowledge in for myself. Everything I learned from the gods every day, you know, um, you know, as well as yourself, like learning Grand Nubian's music. And then when we heard, you know, peace to the God, peace to Allah, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. You know, self. And, you know, I understood completely and I, you know, I still understand and I'm like, yeah, this is, this is fact, this is truth, you know? So that's how I was able to maintain like, you know, I still wouldn't try to change my name to be something or whatever the case, but you know, I still learn every day, every day and I build with the gods, you know. Let me tell you, you move like God. It's like association bring on assimilation. You know what I mean? You can't be around a certain type of motherfuckers without having um that something rub off on you, basically. You know what I mean? So it's like <laughs> you was around a hell of a lot of Five percenters, you know, Papa Woo and all, yeah, yeah. rest in peace, Papa rest Woo. Peace, Papa like, Woo. Like, there you go. Come on, these are these are like some ill influences. There's no way that you could be around that as much as you was around it and not have it rub off on you. So whether you come in the name of a law or not, it's 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 visible that you have these um, you know, you have godlike movements and tendencies and the way you speak and all of that type of shit. Like I right, can tell you, right. you do the knowledge before you do the work. You know what I mean? Like, and that's just from being around, you know, the gods and, and, and seeing how they move. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, you know, that's that's how I take it, you know, peace of the gods. Like I always say that because I don't want to come off and let nobody think like, oh, what's today's math, God? Right, right. What's this left? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, there was a time where you know you got your ass whooped for that. Absolutely, absolutely. Sure. The days I came up in. <laughs> That's my error, my dear. Um. Yeah. Iga, you got I, any? Yeah, I I do. Um, I wanted to ask you. I mean, I, it's going all the way fast forward. You have such an illustrious career, but I'm just fast forwarding all the way for one second. Uh, the um the Hulu series that's out now. Um I'm just curious to know how much of that is actual factual. I, I mean I've heard you know, I've I've heard Riza say, you know, what was you know, some of the things that are and aren't, but from your perspective, I'm I'm just curious to know for one, are you happy with your portrayal in the series? And two, does it seem for the most part to be like on par with with the facts. Mm. This is made for TV, man. Right. <laughs> okay. TV. Okay. It, it's very entertaining. Like, 
if you didn't know the story, that's a good story they got going. Right. Okay. Am I satisfied with my portrayal? And I came in in episode six. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I was there day one, but I understand they was flashing back, going way back, trying to show the start of all of it. And I wasn't with RZA and Dirty them from the beginning. beginning. You know, that was RZA, okay. Dirty, and RZA. So I understand them going that far back in the story and introducing everybody one by one, but. You know, I came in in episode six, and then you know I was, I was the nigga that was, was I guess late giving RZA his money <laughs> when I um when I showed my face. Like, you know, uh, shout out to my man Joey Badass too. He he, he did Joey his thing. Badass. Like, I like that. But um, my first intro scene was I think RZA coming to my crib stepping to me about the money. I had some money for him or something like that. On, on, a, on a hustle, I was late. Like, yo, you know, I'm going to have it for you. I ain't got it or something. You're like, wait, I, don't be having me out here. It's the nigga like with the shit. <laughs> like, nah, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, <laughs> that, ain't, that ain't me. That's not me. That ain't my Hell no. It's, it's things in life that go down. Like, at that time, me being from Park Hill, I couldn't hustle a state with the niggas work in my hood. My hood right. wasn't that, you know what I'm saying? And it was like, you know, and then the, the second part, it was like, you in my house pressing me, like, you know? Right. So it, it yeah. it's made TV, man. Yeah, well, like, is the, realistic, like. <laughs> is, is, the, is the Stapleton versus Park Hill, like, is that, that's, that's a real thing? That, that was real. That was real. That was real. Okay. It's, it's now, same now, but. I still feel there's a little tension. tension there. Right. Now, Back now there. was was Ray and Ghost blowing shots at each other like that? Was that real? Nah, that's not real. You see this? Mm. Yeah, no, Riz Rizza said that wasn't I real. Tell motherfuckers that that wasn't real. Somebody sent me an interview with, with Papa Wu talking about that they was blowing shots or something like that. I'm like, bro, I know uh multiple dudes, like you know, I'm out here on the island and all of that. I know dudes like Ray the Ruckus and all of that type of shit. Right. So I already know a lot of the behind the scenes information. You know what I mean? He's Shout like, out to my man Raider Ruckus. He'll let you know. Sir. Exactly. I talked to Raider Ruckus. That's my guy. Yeah, no, shout I've, out. I've heard. I've, he, I've heard. He's he throwing that. those shots at, at each other. He's like, yeah, they didn't. You know, they didn't like each other. They felt like they was, you know. Yeah. No meth wasn't. Our kill niggas feel like yo Stapleton niggas is grimy niggas or whatever. You know that kind of energy. But they wasn't blowing shots at each other like that. And I tried to tell them all because that. Like oh, that. Lord, Jamar, I'm telling you they were. And I'm like, all right, man, whatever the fuck. Nah, man, Park Hill was the niggas that was trying to get fly, trying to get money. You know what I'm saying? Linking up with Brooklyn niggas. Right. Making moves out of town, doing that type of thing. Stapleton is thugged out. Right, robbing. Stapleton taking A. Thing. <laughs> by accident. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm like, okay. Like, not saying Stapleton wasn't getting money or getting fly. They was known for letting niggas have it. Mm. Straight okay. up. You know right. With the hands, all that shit. Right. That's been an ongoing thing for years. Like, Hatfields and McCoy's type thing. Right. Okay. Now, nah, Meth wasn't asleep on the roof. Right. You know? <laughs> what right. else they in there? They were just making shit up, huh? Yeah. But I mean, yeah. But, like, that's what they do in this Hollywood world. Like, you got to try to make a story that's engaging. I mean, we liked the series. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, we all watched it. We all were engaged by it. But you have to understand that. It's not, you know, when you get to that type of shit, it's not necessarily history that you're looking at. Right. You know what I mean? Like, well, oh, like for instance, the story. For instance, <laughs> for instance, we had we had um we had just ice on the show, God. Word? He, he never met Rizza. He said that never happened. What? There was a part in there where they had just ice specifically press 
Oh, uh, Rizzo. Smacking him up to learn those oh, lessons. Yeah, those your, lessons. You know, your lessons type of shit. Just I said that is not true. That never, it happened. never happened. You never even met Rizzo back then. See, because okay. even in his song, way, way back, going way, way back, he never brings up. Remember, he was naming everybody. You know, mm. he didn't even, yo, but the Mikes and Men, that documentary was fantastic. Well, I was going to say one thing they, that they did, uh, one impression of you that it did give, which I believe to be true, it was like, you was a motherfucker that came in the booth and laid your verse down and had everybody else like, oh, shit. <laughs> uh, you know, for me, see, I don't know, man. Like, I separate I, the two. I, I don't try, care what you say. That happened at tri on Triumph. Yeah, I, <laughs> you <laughs> I have a lot of shit. Yeah, I'm being modest. That I'm was modest. one of my favorites before Triumph. Like, Word. like I'm, I'm telling you, he was that guy that I felt like, yo, niggas are sleeping on deck. Like, like, there's always those ones that's apparent, and then there's the one that's not so apparent but should be apparent. And I felt like deck was that guy. But anyway, continue. Yeah, I'm in a crew full of superheroes, man. You know, right. to rap Avengers. So you know, I could be the, I could be, <laughs> I could be Thor. By the time I hit the scene, Hulk done smashed already. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, gotcha. That's why you gotta. I gotta hit the hammer first. <laughs> so I, that's why you hear me first on a lot of shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. damn, to go behind Meth and, mm. and, and, and Ray and Ghost back to back and mm. coming off. You know, you got to have the most powerful shit. So let me go first. <laughs> and that's the greatest <laughs> opening. Fuck, the number, that's the greatest opening of a. Of a, a song, ever. fuck the bullshit. That's the, the it's best. It's like I said before. Other than clap your hands, everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> these are the breaks. It's the best, man. Oh. So, of Mike's and Men, what did you think about the documentary? Because I love the documentary. I watched the documentary because so much footage of you guys. Well, I know I, the guy that made that to... actually. What you say? I said I know the guy that um. That was a that really, was a really. Doctor. I mean, they even showed you all listening to the cream beat. Like, yo, we're going to do... I mean, they, they had footage of that. What'd you think of that one? Nah, Mike's and Men was dope. Yeah, was, I love that shit. You know what I'm saying? That was us. That wasn't scripted. I didn't though. even want to watch the series after I saw the doc. But I'm saying, if you saw both, you could just compare the series documentary and, and see the differences. Yeah. And um, sure. so it, it was never at a point where dudes was... Excuse me, like shooting at each other and, and all that. But the story of us from the documentary makes a good story for the Hulu. It's like, you know how they say like the names and the faces, yeah, change, you know, in the story, you know, any likeness is but that's all it is. It's just a flip. Give y'all, you know, pieces of the truth and create a new story off. I'm gonna be honest. I was a little disturbed not seeing you, God, in the first season. From what I understand, he's gonna be in the second season. But yeah, you know, I was gonna be in the second season, right? But I, I, I don't know. I was just like, "Where's you, God?" Like, like, I know he's around at this time. Where's he at? Like, you know what I mean? Like, like, yeah. From what I understand, it might have been some whatever. You know, shit happens. Well, yeah, it's, you know, I can't tell you why. I can't right. tell you why, but I can tell you that he didn't sign. He didn't sign on with. Right. So, so, so in the movie, there's a fictional fire that was actually a flood in real life, correct? Right. Now, from what I understand, in this flood, one of the things that were lost was your solo album. Right. That I heard was fire yeah man it's it's the difference in it's the difference in winning the chip which is making it to the final you know i'm saying if i'd have had that album i, I believe at that time we could have got pushed to get to that platinum like you know, like the rest of my brothers but you know even it went gold <laughs> you know the the, the the makeshift album that i put together because when i lost that one like all the tracks I took at that time, we was using floppy disks, and like 
that tape and stuff like right. that. Um, I took all of that to tech company. Uh, I went to an IT place in DC. Try to get it recovered. Try to get it recovered. Put it in the white room. Everything. Um, dust free shit. They, they tried every technique they thought of. Mm. Um, almost ran up like close to you know, 15, 16 grand. Wow. To not save it. Not save yeah. it. So Ray is on the purple. Like so much is going on. I got to pretty much fend for myself. Put an album together with Rizzo over here. Jizz is over there. Everybody's just signing their deals. You know, Rizzo, remember Rizzo, uh, I mean, uh, Dirty. Right. Uh, Electric. Signed. Uh -huh. signed already. A couple F of people. Jam. Everybody's going all over the place like gangbusters. Exactly. Hot ass fucking album that could compete with all of these. And then it's lost. Like, like, Ugh. how did that make you feel at that moment? Like, 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 I know your stomach had to be like when, when they, when they called you and said, yo, it was a flood, bro. And yo, I got to tell you something. Mm. Yo, your shit was yeah, in there. Yeah, like, yeah. like, stomach just sank, man. You know, where you were know. you when you got that call? You remember? I in, yeah, I was in Park Hill for sure. Mm. And, um. No, I was out of town. We were actually on the road. Wizard got the call. Hmm. Wizard told me. I was like, damn. You know, like, whatever mood I was in just went out the window. Like, are you fucking serious? Sure. Like, like that's, that's the first thing I'm up with. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, are Yo, you like, fucking serious? What? But you know, floods is natural. I, it wasn't so much of the flood that it was fucking me up. It was just like, damn, my shit got caught in the flood. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shit. But you know, all due respect, it was it was more of yo, hope everything is okay. <laughs> right. House and, and things of that nature. But when we got to it and was able to see what it looked like, the sort of damage was like, damn, bro. You know, it's not just my album, but bad shit. Right. You no know, keyboards, other people's albums, perhaps. Right. But that shit, just looking at it, it's like, I can see it now as I'm telling you. Mm. Um, <laughs> and, and the disc laying on the floor. And there was no way to recreate what you did. You know what I mean? Try to find those samples and put it back together or, or use this song um, really, templates, like, maybe the lyrics. You know what I mean? And put them to different beats. I don't know. I tried to put some of the lyrics to different beats. Right. But a lot of shit didn't fit. Everything was already on this turn, on this, on this wheel spinning. Like we was gonna go with a Spider-Man type of thing. Mm. It's like, you know, mm. folks was Iron Man. You know, and it's like, yo, we try to put and that the world you know that first line, you know, swinging through your tag neighborhood Spider-Man, yo, let's go with some ill. Swinging from the city on you know some rooftop shit, you know, uh, 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 overlooking the city. It's gonna make a whole type of album based on some crazy, you know, nighttime escapade shit. Beats went along with that. So trying to recreate them, I tried to do some of them, but it, it wasn't, it wasn't right. coming out like Rizzo. You know I remember at that time he was he's on the move. Producing, getting everybody's everybody's bag. So it was like, right, I got dropped out. Yeah. Chopper, to get Rizzo to try to go back and recreate what he already did at that time yeah. was almost impossible because he's all over the place. With exactly, exactly. So, like I said, I'm 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 dropped out for Chopper with, with you know, <laughs> no canteen, no radio, nothing. I'm just in the jungle with the gun. So I'm like, fuck. Mm -hmm. And then you know, and in, in in that process too, you know, that's that's why Inspector Deck hasn't had like the real commercial success as the next rapper because that kind of experience in the beginning, he happened that album lost and it happened to do a whole lot of shit on the fly. It was like I was angry, you know what I'm saying? I was like, yo, 
You know what I'm saying? So a lot of them songs was like I said, me in the jungle with the gun. I'm just I'm just shooting off raps. I'm just I'm not conscious of making songs and thinking about radio and, and understanding the business of how to sell a record and things like that. I'm just I'm launching off on every song. Right. You know what I'm saying? And even with that, it still pulls off a gold album. But had I would have had I would have got that platinum off of that first album, which I know was possible, he'd be having a whole different conversation. Like it wouldn't be like, yo, deck is the underrated or niggas don't know about, or you know what I'm saying? Because I had a bunch of shit that I was ready. You spot RZA. You know, when I put my album on control second side, I had three RZA beats and no Wu Tang features. Think Dang. about that. Right. Every album before me, entirely produced by RZA. Right. Had the whole clan. Mad features. Yeah. I wouldn't call you underrated, though. I think I think that there's a healthy. I mean, of, of I mean, when you think of the marquee, it's like, oh yeah, Meth Ray are celebrated in that regard. But I I personally feel like when we're t- when we're having the conversation of like the talent level in the woo, like you are more often regarded as more people's favorite than a lot of like everyone else. Like there's always, it's always deck and such. Oh, way more often Uh-oh. than, than you may be aware. Like make no mistake. There's no, there's, there's no, like you're not the six man at all. Nah. Yeah, no. I, don't, I don't feel like that necessarily, but you know, if you let people tell it, well, oh, you didn't sell a million. It's like, yeah, uh, you, you scored all these points, but you didn't win it. It's, it's, it, uh, and I think it's your personality right. too. I think it's your personality too. You're not, you're like, you're okay. You're, you're not type that's, uh, you know what I mean? You let your words speak. Oh, yeah. Some other cats are marketing right. tools. They like, you know, because Beth is like an actor. He wants, you know, Beth is an actor, whatever. You know, some people are the introverts, some are the ex. So I think it's just the way you move. You've yeah. always been comfortable with that. But people know, yo, deck, word. But you're you're good with yeah. lyrically, people know. You know what I'm yes. saying? And, and, and then, you know, even in the regards to Meth, Meth, when Meth came out, Meth was grimy, bro. Meth had his hair crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Demon eyeballs. <laughs> Demon eyeballs. You know what I'm saying? He, that, that, the sex symbol nigga didn't come to later. He was, he was hitting them with the, with the, with the darts. You know what I'm saying? Like, he prided himself on his lyrics as well. Like, he, he take that shit serious. But for yeah. me, it's like, yeah, I feel like I can hang with anybody, man. Put me on the track with Top nigga, I'm gonna come with something. I feel like that. I feel like I'm gonna walk off feeling like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And when you hear it, that's right. Yeah, I try to make sense with my shit. I try to keep it different. Like, there's two ways to go in rap, bro. Like, you you either you going commercial, or you making these songs for the radio, or you trying to appease the masses like that, or you making music for fans. You know what I'm saying? So, with me, I know. With through Wu Tang, the millions of fans we got through Wu Tang, whoever I got individually on my own, I mean, if you fuck with me, then you fuck with what I do. You know what I'm saying? So when I when I make my songs, no matter how weird, if it's slow, it ain't got no hook, whatever the, whatever you feel is wrong with the shit, is right. Somebody, there's somebody that that's why they fuck with me because I do that. Hmm. Another thing, it's you know, a lot of it is all about personality. Sometimes, like, like you have a certain a kind of personality that I feel not as braggadocious as some of your counterparts in the woo. You yeah. see, that's what brings about a bank a balance. Like everybody can't be like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like some of us, some gotta be like. You know, I'm mad vex. That's what the projects made me like. Like, ain't no way they ever t- like. Like, whereas you know, someone like Meth and just the way he's jumping around on st- it's just different. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that energy people will look at that combined with their rhymes. You see, I'm saying where you're not doing all of that. You're just you just yeah. with the darts. Like, you know what I mean? Guaranteed. And sometimes people are more attracted to the, you know. 
Yeah, that's, no, like, that's like putting the shine on the darts. You know what I mean? Like you just like listen, I'm giving you raw darts. Like, right. and, and for them, there's a little more. You know, with the, the animation and the, or the attitude, the cockiness. You know, even like Raekwon, his his cockiness. You know, he got that cocky attitude like that. I think certain people like. You know what I mean? Like, and they just gravitate to that. Man, cocky, bro. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I'm always M16 to your head. So it's like, for the most part, I do switch out of shit. I make songs for females. I do like, you know, I I make shit that outside the box that you don't expect from me as well. Now, I got a question from my my executive producer, Artie Stacks. He want to know, he said, it was at the end of a song. So why did say his name INS the Rebel at the end of a Tupac song? Yeah. On my mind's made up on the All Eyes on Me album. Tupac, Method Man, Red Man. He said, Why did they leave his verse off the song but only left his left saying his name? Were you supposed to be on that song? <laughs> yeah, man. I was supposed to be on that song. I heard I heard Pac was hating, man. Rest in peace, you know. Really? Yeah, I heard he came home, you know, came home from death row, heard the song, and then, and you know. And didn't they want came you up specifically on it? I went to, um, I went with, with uh, Red and Meth to Montel Jordan video shoot in California. Right. That happened to be the same day same place where Nate Dogg and BG Knockout was going. That's a classic West Coast tale, if y'all know about it. BG Knockout, Nate Dogg was going at it at the video right. shoot. I wound up in the video just being there. Skated from that to Dad's house with, with Beth and Red. They was doing the track. Dad just said, fuck it, turn the mic on. We all here. Rage. Uh, as corrupt, uh, uh, RBX, yeah, and me, Meth, and Red. So it's like seven, eight of us in there. He turns a beat on, he makes a beat up from scratch. Took those, the uh, um, left those a hook on it. Got my mind made it up. Come on, you can get it, get into it anytime. That's like, yo, I'm gonna keep that. Made that a hook. That's a red, throw they bars. Rage decides, fuck it, I'm gonna. I'm gonna get on it too. No, so, I'm gonna get on it too. You know, anybody decided to get All on right. it. Long story short, it had like seven seven verses on it. That's how we left it. I heard Pop comes home, steps to death row. Yo, I need some song, whatever. Uh, I don't know how he got the song from Daz. Where that came from, but he popped. Took the song, uh, me off to Rage, RBX, somebody else. I'm not mis- I can't recall. Who. It took wow. us all off the track. Left, 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 red, and put itself on the track. I think he took maybe Daz or Corrupt off. You know, he, he chopped it. But um, <laughs> for some reason they left the ad version. <laughs> <laughs> 16 bars, but they let the beat play and let the whole 16 bars play out. Just had my ad libs. Wow. Why not leave the fucking verse? Wow. Make no sense. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> can't can't get me off the track. And I heard that he was like, yo, you know, niggas is on there like really rocking this shit. And he wasn't trying to be all rapidly rap. He wanted to just say some gangster shit. Get it over with. That's the story I heard. Like, yo, all right, so these niggas got to go. Now, apparently, because I've seen people in the comments saying that your verse from this is on the internet and it's fucking fire. Hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's. See, I think that's the the, your verse might be on the internet. That's what they're saying from this. That song. might that might have been the problem. Like, yo, <laughs> we got to go. Hmm. <laughs> Man, that's that's uh, you can't be mad at that though. MC is going MC, man. I uh, 
I, I had a conversation with Sean Price about uh, something like that. God, God bless him. But he he told me, he was like, I can't do songs with girls because I can't have no female verse better than mine. <laughs> right. Yeah, see, so, you know, doing the track with you is hard. Before we passed, like, we were, um, he had made a big, uh, you know, splash about saying he don't, he don't rock with females at all and stuff, but he did shout me out and he shouted MC Light out. And, uh, so we were low key just gonna drop an EP called Fisher Price. I'm Fisher, he's Sean Price. But, nice. But, um, but yeah, we couldn't get past the, we, we got like one song in via a third party, but we, we never got it, uh, we never got to get it done. So he was like, nah, because then if uh if your verse better, I'm gonna wanna go do mine over. And then I'm like, nah, but I ain't letting that rock. You ain't you ain't shit no uh, baby. So right. we, we never could get past that first thing. So I say all of that to say, us you an MC, like I'm an MC, you know how that shit go. Exactly, exactly. And you know, we're gonna keep we got to do that all day because if you're gonna write yours over, I gotta write mine over. Exactly. Go. So I want to ask all three of you, what's the difference between rap and hip hop? You know, when people say they're rap, we are hip hop. Can you all explain that? Well, I, I would say one is more, one is more influenced by business and corporation. And that's rap. One, right. And that's rap. And then one, and then the other is more influenced by, um, love hip-hop is a is a is a way of life yeah, love and 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 a, and a passion and a uh you know something that transcends money and all of that oh it was all black okay thanks uh, <laughs> I appreciate that appreciate that when it was art okay gotcha. right 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 yeah, um, that's what i wanted to know yeah shit. dr seuss can rap bro <laughs> yeah right <laughs> green eggs and ham Oh. Yeah, mean? all these rappers ain't hip hop. Okay, okay. Do you think you think um coming up on Staten Island, especially um like the way it's so isolated? Do you do you think that actually helped what y'all were doing as far as uh how y'all was crafting your shit? Guaranteed. The world, the world thought we was weird. Hmm. Niggas got karate chops in y'all beats. Y'all mm -hmm. talking like, yeah, oh, I'm a coach of cypher, God. You know, like, they didn't they just, they just move for the world. They was like, yo, Staten Island? What's out there? Like, they, they thought it was country. And it seemed like Staten Island dudes kind of sound the same in a way. Like, like, I can't explain it, but there's the way that Staten Island dudes talk mm -hmm. that is kind of similar. Like, but, but it's very, like, 5%-ish. Like even if you're not a five percenter, you can hear right. those five percenter overtones in the way that dudes from Staten Island talk, especially from that side of the island. Yeah, definitely. A lot of OGs was was five percenters. You know, my next door neighbor was a guy named Pure Mathematics, mm. and that's a dude you should just school me on life in general. You know, um, but yeah, Staten Island is different from the rest of the city. Man, we isolated. Like I said, you can't even take a train off the island. You know? Like you, we got one train that takes one train that just goes through the island. Yeah, you, you got to take a whip across the across the bridges, or you got to jump on that ferry to get to the city. But, you know, me growing up on Staten Island, I was born in the Bronx, 183rd Grand Concourse. You know what I mean? Like Bronx Lebanon Hospital. I moved to Staten Island early, and me growing up in in early Staten Island, like I just I traveled. I got off the island. I hung out. EMCC with you guard. I hung out in Far Rockaway with my cousin, you know, Auburn, Edgemere, mm -hmm. 40s, all of that. So, you know, I was able to get out, experience different things, people, styles, and then come back to Staten Island to you know, just show off on Staten Island. You know, shout out my man Ratchet Russ. That's a cat I used to hustle way back in the days. We just was coming out, fresh shit every day, coming. Going to 125th, you know, like a lot of Staten Islanders at that time wasn't even leaving Staten Island. Like all we knew was Staten Island, Staten Island Mall, shit. Like, 
know? <laughs> so, um, you know, once we started branching out and bringing that culture back, more people started coming in and, and checking Staten Island out. You know, not to mention us linking up with different people out of state and things like that. So, you know, we we known for like four MCs or the four MDs. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, what's my man name? Mm-hmm. Uh, Girl, I want to shake you down. What was his name? Gregory Abbott or something like that? Oh, oh Gregory Abbott. Staten Island? Gregory, Gregory Abbott. Gregory Abbott from Staten Island. Yeah. I didn't know Gregory that. Gregory Abbott was I from Shake It. Shake you down. <laughs> Girl, I want to talk to you. you. you all the love in you. From all across the world. Yeah. I've been missing you. And then after y'all, you had the blue cheese niggas is from Staten Island. <laughs> Wait, remember blue cheese? I don't love you, God. Yeah. Savage was huh? also living in Staten Island. Macho Man Randy Savage was living in Oh, Staten Island. yeah, brother, yeah. Hell yeah. Let me tell you something, brother. Yeah. Love Hope the Wu-Tang Clan. Cribs out there, track masters. I love you. Yeah. Hey, yo, the Wu-Tang uh, Clan, brother. MC Light, he was living on Staten Island. Oh, That's shit. I didn't know. Oh, yeah. Uh, 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 my man, okay. Milton. From from uh from what you would call it uh yeah, audio yes. two live on Staten Island audio two wow I live on Staten Island yes or yeah. Jamal <laughs> honorary honorary hey. member hey I've been here for a minute yeah oh, oh I'm a Wu Tang cousin by way of because on my solo album Raekwon was on my solo album uh RZA was on my solo album Damn. uh Prodigal Son who's a Wu-Tang cousin. Uh, Young Dirty and Jizz's son was on uh, my uh, solo album as well. And Papa Wu was was like all through my interludes and shit like that. So that's how I became a Wu-Tang cousin. I seen like a Wu-Tang, they had this Wu-Tang diagram and they showed like Wu-Tang and all these branches and shit. And I saw myself on the motherfucker. I said, oh shit. I'm a Wu Tang cousin, not this motherfucker. <laughs> Yo, um, they just I want to be a Wu Tang niece. You want to be? I'll be a, a I'll be a Wu Tang niece. Oh, honorary <laughs> Okay. Please. Oh shit! He just dubbed the all of us Wu Tang. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, I was a. Hey, I was on social media fighting that that damn verses with uh with RZA and and Primo and everybody like oh Primo and, and all all RZA gonna do is play Wu Tang. I'm on Twitter like that's all he needs to play. Shit, what you talking about? You acting like RZA ain't now here. What? Uh, I was <laughs> I was fighting for like three days straight. That was a good one. That was, that, was a, that was a great one. one of the best for me. So multiple people want to know about how you hooked up with Guru on Above the Clouds. Above the Clouds. Shout out to Mr. T. A pity to fool you. Yes. <laughs> Shout out to my man Guru, man. Yo, Guru That's is alive. Guru. You know, he's alive, dude. Um, I met up with Guru by accident. I was, I was, my car got towed. I was on West Side Highway in Manhattan. Oh man. Truck, and I was about to uh head up to town on 34th Street, right? Uh, right on the west side. On the west side. Mm-hmm. And I was down, I was down by like West Fourth. That's by like between gotcha. West Fourth and Six or West Village, like yeah. And um I heard some people talking about a party. So I was like, man, they don't took my car. I'm about to go get a drink or something. So I went, it was this club called Don Hills. Don yeah, Hills. yeah. Remember Don Hills? Yeah. <laughs> I remember Don Hills. Remember that spot? Huh? I, I walked yeah. to Don Hills. I see Sadat X over there. Uh huh. I see Sadat. I see um, Carl Thomas over here. I see Guru. And so I just walk up and I see, oh, shit, what's up, my nigga? Just chopping it up like them. So, you know, we just turned it into a little party between ourselves, but you know, and, um, just chopping up. And he was like, Yo, I'm working in uh I forget the studio where they was in at the time. Was it D and D, something like that? Probably, yeah, D and D. Uh-huh. D and D. He said, Yo, come through. I was like, yo, no doubt. So I came through and uh me, it was just us three. And 
Mia was like, yo, I got beats, but I want to make something from scratch. I want to, I want to hit you. I want to bless y'all from, from scratch. So he comes and makes this crazy ass beat from scratch. Mm-hmm. Why time pieces together, put the scratch in, put the shit in, you know, up in the sky and all that shit. So I'm just like, yo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm just watching in awe. I, you know, I watched RZA do it for so long. I'm, I never, that's my first time really seeing it's somebody Primo. else. Right. Yeah. 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 So Primo was just doing it for me. I said, man, motherfucker's a genius. And He's like, yo, I got something. You know, I, me, I'm watching him make it, but I'm not really hearing it, hearing it. I'm just like, in my mind, I'm vibing to the tempo, trying to write lines down. But then he was like, yo, come in, come. I'm talking to Guru. He's like, yo, y'all come in and listen to this real quick. And plays the beat. The Zach beat you hear now with everything in it. And he's just, yo, I want y'all to tell me know what it need. Let me know what it need. I was just like, yo, that shit don't need nothing. You're like nothing. <laughs> Like, yo, what, what you want this to be about? Like, what's the type of, type of he's like, yo, you know, I want to make this mental. Just left it there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, right. I want to make this mental. Wow. I was like, okay. <laughs> I, got, I got that. I got some of that. That's like one of the best hip hop songs ever. It's definitely, that's one of my favorite. That's in my top five of hip hop. At first, let me talk about I'll be in the jungle with the M16, bro. First fucking line, be smoking niggas' whole verse. That's how I be feeling. Like, I leave scientists mentally scarred, triple extra large, wild like rock stars who smash guitars. That's simple, basic. If I was teaching class, I would teach that line. You know what I'm that ain't even the hottest shit, but it's like, yo, that that it moves mountains, bro. You know what I mean? And, and compared to what people say, that's why when people listen to Respect the Deck, you're gonna get that. You're not gonna get that rah rah. Yo, I shot fifty niggas on the way to shoot sixty other niggas. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and your mother got away, and I popped her too, and I took the seat. <laughs> niggas is outrageous, man. You know what outrageous. What I'm and the niggas is trying to, it's like life imitates art, art imitates life. Niggas is trying to live their lyrics, getting jammed up, getting caught with all types of weapons and drugs and murdering niggas. And come on, man. Right. That's what we're getting money. You know what I'm saying we all know that shit sells, it's entertainment, man. Come, but come on. There's a limit to that shit. Yeah. Limit. You can't shoot somebody on the way to the mosque, though. No, no, you shouldn't. No, you shouldn't. No, you shouldn't, guys. Inspiring rappers, no. <laughs> niggas shot two niggas on the way to shoot three niggas. <laughs> right now, you know what I'm saying? and they get in the back. You can't do both. Right. You, know what I'm saying? you can't do both. So me, I chose to get the bag. I don't talk about my criminal life like that. I don't put my my shit on record to be used against me in the court of law because it can and will be. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I'm right. cool. I'm cool with the hip hop. I grew up hip hop. I, I love the Big Daddy Kane's and the Cool G Raps and the Slick Ricks and Bismarcks and all the niggas that you know the Shantae's and everybody that taught me this shit. So when I rhyme, I rhyme for that. I give that up. I make money. I'm not broke. I'm not struggling. I'm I'm surviving out here. I'm not the richest nigga, but my success can't be compared to nobody else's success because. I'm looking at where I came from to where I'm at. That's success to me. This nigga could have sold a trillion record, bro. You know what I'm saying? So my hundred thousand. My motherfucking rhyme is gonna last longer than his. My shit gonna be here when I'm gone. When I'm gone, they're gonna talk about my lyrics and, and, and uphold them shits. Like, yo, that's that because you all the time. That's because you said I bomb atomic atomically. Socrates, Socrates philosophies, philosophies and hypotheses. <laughs> and I be dropping, dropping these, these mockery. Lyrically. Lyrically perform on um, robbery. Damn. Whew. What did he say? Flee from the robbery. Robbery. Possibly. Possibly. They spotted me. Spotted me. What was that? Yeah, you, you, you set the tone. And you on the wall. You on the wall, son. You on the wall. <laughs> on the wall. You know what that was? That's that's the next line. Battle scarred Shogun, bro. 
That's who I am in the game. Mm. I took the hits. I, I was on the front line for the clan, for myself. I took a lot of hits. You know what I'm saying? While a lot of brothers got shine. I'm not mad. You know what I'm saying? Like my album not only got caught in the flood, bro, but by the, by the time I put my album out or was ready to, Loud Records went defunct. Mm. Y'all remember that? <laughs> yes. When BMG dropped Loud, it, 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 Sony dropped all that shit. Sony picked up my contract, and now I'm on the label with Three Six Mafia and, and Nas and Crucial Conflict and Gangsta Boo and Right. And now I'm 33rd on the on the waiting list. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yo, bro, my story, niggas don't know my story in the game, but it's it's, it's cool because I'm not the nigga that's looking for all that. I'm not looking for the shine. I'm not looking for that. You know? Like, I'm able to take care of family. I'm able to put food on the table, take care of my seeds. Nigga, if I drove a Ferrari past you right now, what, what would that mean? Nothing. What would that mean to anybody? It's besides the nigga was in a Ferrari. He spent 250 for that. I'd rather buy a house. I'd rather buy a house for my family member. You know what I'm saying? I'm not right. looking for all that shit. I'm not looking for accolades, bro. They're gonna know when I'm gone. That's that's my new t-shirt, man. Like y'all gonna know when I'm gone. Like go through my catalog, listen to the shit I say, man. And well, tell your own hey, tell tell your own story, mate. You know, do, man, do your do your own uh biography or you know a behind the scenes of of, of yourself because some some you know there there are there's things about every artist that that people don't know and would be surprised and know i mean there's people to this day like what i didn't know q-tip signed you first yes before there was a buster rhymes before all of that i think it was q-tip artist before q-tip i think it was dos effects artist like this so you know <laughs> every 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 artist has their journey. So, yeah, yeah. My, my I have two questions for you. Um, one, do you still have the floppy disk with that first album? Oh, do you still have that in your possession? Crazy. I think I do. I think I do. I think I have that in my crib in in, in Jersey. Well, wait. The, of the first album that got lost. Yeah. No. Oh. Do do now now. So they're they they're in the, they're in the crib somewhere. Do you do you think right now with technology in 2021, like if you could put that hand and put that in the hands of somebody like an Elon Musk or somebody, they could uh could get that? Just just say Elon like, Musk. Like, you got Elon me. Musk. I'm I'm I'm, I'm, try, I'm going on. I'm shooting for the stars. Like this nigga yeah. is building. Like yeah. if anybody, Elon Musk can do it. Like have you thought about like? Cause I I got a hard drive that's supposed to be like done for, and I got all type of shit in it. And I'm just like I'm, I'm a sure hold it. I'm sure there's technology recovery. Because one of these right. one of these days somebody's gonna provide the proper recovery tools. I think would they you, have. Would you go on that track right now, 2021? Like let me see if I could pull this, these files up. I don't know. Like if I could if I could recover that album. It's on some dirty shit. Even if it was dirty, I'd I'd put it out. Like, yeah, so I would I would have to like release that shit as uncontrolled substance again. You know what I mean? Like, I would I would I would call it uncontrolled substance again, like the real one. Okay. But I don't know if I get a hold of Elon and he make it happen for me. I, I <laughs> give, <laughs> shit, I, I tried. I tried to spend money on them joints, but I know I never tossed them away, so they're still in my possession. I mean, RZA was quoted as saying that if it did come out, it would have rated up there with the classic solo album. You know what I mean? Like those those ones that people really talk about. Um, yeah. You know, like the purple tape and all that. Type yeah, I had three beats from RZA, man. If I would have had a fully produced RZA album and, you know, mm -hmm. Wu-Tang Corporation would have been behind the album and I would have had right. to roll out, you know, the tour buses and the raps and all of that wild shit in the beginning. Like, yeah, then we have a different conversation right now, bro. But like I said, I was I was Rambo in the jungle for Dolo. I, you know, I, I got wounded like a motherfucker, but I made it out. You know what I'm saying? And, and, you know, I learned on my own and I started spending my own money, put a couple of projects out by, on my own, made a, made a few dollars, you know what I'm saying? Um, resident patient movement things of that nature and um you know linked up with 
couple of my, 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 my Greek brother and my Irish brother they put together a skateboarder stoner group called mm. Zod Face. Mm. And yeah, you know, like 10 projects with them, you know, a couple of instrumentals and EPs, but at least five to six solid albums. And that's been keeping my lights on, bro. You know what I'm saying? Wu-Tang put an album out every six years. Every right. Seven years. So, you know, Zod Face is, like we got a cult sort of like you know i look at myself like the mf dooms of the world i was gonna say like an mf doom rest yeah, in peace people, people that have the die hard cult following but you know they may never made it mainstream right like, it's cool it's cool because like you said there's, there's, mad, there's mad people in the hall of fame that ain't never got the rank right you know what i'm saying so it's like yo that's going to define you. That's going to define you. That ain't going to define me. I learned that I'm not going to make, sell a million records a long time ago. Right? So I, I decided to make a few, you know, real estate moves, some mutual fund moves, and things of that nature to, to save myself. You know, that's that rainy day money. Um, you know, I, I learned that a long time ago. So I do it now. Me too. I'm, done. <laughs> I like, I'm, not, I'm never twerking. I'm never putting pasties on my titties so i'm I'm gonna be here and everybody else is gonna be there cool okay i'm cool <laughs> it is what it is yeah, man. Now we strive for better but uh, yeah you ain't giving out the window so it is what it is you know so yeah, yeah. i got a question now uh, with the woo wear which makes me mad what the the woo wear shit it was it's there it showed up then it went away showed up but it was so that's always been a thing like where's the wool wear shit why does it keep coming and going the fuck oh you oh. go to, you go over to africa right now you'll see some kids wearing wool wear. <laughs> hell yeah 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 um you know wool wear that's run by my brother power okay uh, uh power yeah shout where, out to power where do you uh, go for it? where do you go where because I, I thought it was like they stopped it then it it came you know and then you had to get bootleg shit you know what i mean no nah, the last Thing I remember he did a deal with like uh I can't recall who it was, but there's some type of deal with Barney's. Uh -huh. So I know you can find it at Barney's. Okay. And you can find it at spots like what's some mall stores like odd topic and Spencer's and things of that nature. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'd be just, mad to become that now, you know. Wish wish got it, that Chinese company. Yeah, wish you know, like we mall material now, you know. Yeah, <laughs> make it to that level. Yeah, someone uh, just said thirty six chambers was twenty seven on Rolling Stone five hundred. Wow. Will Damn. we will we see another uh, Wu Tang album anytime in the near future? That's a hard one, man. Um, I I ain't got no problem doing it. You know, just based on the, what, the, what, the, what the demands are, what the business is, but. You know, a lot of a lot of my brothers are in Hollywood right now. They doing movies. You know, even though it's not, you know, being filmed at the moment, but you know, their careers are going in different ways. I don't know who's actually down to actually come back and deal with nine minds crammed together again. You know, like I said, I don't have no problem with it because you know, it's, at this level, I'm cool with who I am. I'm, a, you know, I'm my own man. I'm raising my children. I'm doing other things. Music. I allowed it to be a hobby so I can develop the passion again. And so I'm not trying to be out here rapping because I got to. I'm rapping because I want to. You know? Well, right. Get and do it. It would be a blessing. I think the world would like one more. Or at least give them the album that Martin Screlly had. I was going to just right. add you what? Never think about that whole Martin Scarelli shit. Yeah, <laughs> I was, I was coming, I was coming, I was getting it there. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what's up with that. Like when I did that album, man, I'm just being for real. This shit is all, it's all out there already. But I did the album for, for a producer called Silver Rings. I know, know Silver Rings. You know Silver Rings. Yeah, he did some sucker shit. Like he said, the album was for him. It was gonna be released in Europe and Europe only. All right, he's an overseas dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a RZA drone, man. He's a drone. Mm. So what he wound up doing is wanting to be in his pocket so much, he took the album and they created what is the $2 million auctioned album that right. he heard in 88 years or something like that. Or 
all the craziness that was attached and it came in this crazy box mm -hmm. yeah it's just indiana jones type of box that yeah, I, it was forged oh. in the fire of um prometheus or some shit like that right <laughs> yeah I, I got sued for that too bro like you know i had not all type of crazy shit. i ain't get a dime of the two million nobody got a dime of the two million so you know this it, it just seemed like a big hoax to me you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like big hoax some, some type of propaganda but somebody actually pocketed that two million you know what i'm saying wow. so um you know, I got out the lawsuit. This dude went to jail. I think the feds got the album now. <laughs> right. Wow. <laughs> so, so, some, in the station and shit. Somewhere, I was about to say somewhere in the federal offices in in Kentucky, somebody up in there jamming. But that's so. That's what. That's how deep the Wu Tang is, though. That's just a cool story. Someone got the Wu Tang box. Right. And I, it's just it's dope. It's dope. It's it's dope. Just white officers. That like feels so privileged, like yo, I get to listen to the Wu Tang shit every fucking night, and nobody else knows. About <laughs> I got the Wu Tang Clan. We got it, baby. We got it. it. All right, right. I don't just know. jewel box. It came in. He's like, man, this is beautiful, man. Oh, Wu Tang. Jewel. <laughs> it's amazing, man. Got it. oh, yeah. got that. Let me ask you a question that I'm getting ready to start asking everybody that comes on here. <laughs> Vaccine or no vaccine? He nice. Uh, you talking for me? For you? No deal, bro. No deal. No vaccine? Nah, no vaccine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, that's I'm right. Good, bro. No, that's good. Fuck that. Fuck that vaccine. Yeah, I'm going off the grid, bro. I'm Gene, Gene Hackman and Enemy of the State. What? Yeah. I'm glad oh, yeah. you that, my brother. Um, we don't we don't condone that here. Um, we don't co-sign that. We don't think that that's wise for our people or for nobody really. Um, and yeah, I ain't doing all that. I seen people that took the vaccine and caught COVID again. Yeah, because yeah. it doesn't it, protect you from it. That's it does not. It does <laughs> not prevent it. It doesn't prevent. It's still transferable. It's like it's insane. It's like, what are you taking it for? Then? He said, "What kind of question is that?" Fuck out of here, whoever that was. Uh, what kind of question is that? Someone just said it. What kind of goes? Fuck you, me. What kind of question is? It? That's the dude that's taking it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. People stand on. Some people might come on and be like, "Oh yeah, I'm definitely. I'm. I'm going to take it. I'm ready." Yeah, feel you know, free, I, I, I know some people. Too. I'm surprised that they took it, but they took it. You know what I mean? So, yes, sir. I know. I know a few yeah. people that took it. I know. I'm keeping my mama in the house away from it. I, I, any of her doctors, I told her, any of her doctors try to slip her some shit. And she called me. Call me. I, and you know. And, yeah. But and the thing are, is, is that they're not understanding the long term. Shit. Everyone's like, I'm, I'm fine. I said, motherfucker, let it settle. Let it. it this yeah. is some like long term shit. Exactly. My my, my daughter has till February six at her job. She's walking out because they're trying to require the, the employees by February six to take it. She's already she's already looking for another job. I'm I'm already prepared to not be able to tour overseas anymore. If that if it comes down to not being able to travel, I mean, just gotta figure well, it out. I'll be virtually uh, doing shit. Right. Be good. You're gonna be good because we we living in 2021. Gonna be able to get fake COVID papers and all that. Or all like, that. Oh! I'm going to Chinatown real quick. It's real world. Yes, <laughs> we we gonna figure it out. I love us. You're gonna get, we gonna get around, around. Get that shot. You're gonna be out here looking like Michael J. Fox out this motherfucker. Yo, and no we, lie. I'm not. I, I ain't even gonna name names, but I know somebody that got it. And I and they were asked today. My people were asking today, "How you feel?" She was like, "I feel like I'm growing a tail." <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. She feel like she's about to grow a tail. And she just might be. That's what's so crazy. Yeah. She just might be for all she know, because you're taking some shit that you didn't never do the knowledge to. You just <laughs> gone with motherfucker. What motherfuckers tell you, people that you trust. Fuck yeah. that. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. A, a long time ago, my uh, my doctor told me, um, right, right, I was about to get the birth control shot. And I was like, yo, is this going to make me sick? Is this going to, like, do something to me? He was like, well, you know, there is a saying in medicine, anything that goes in you is going to have a reaction. Right. And, and, and I was like, I was like, okay, now what kind of reaction? You never know. But anything you put in your body, it's always going to have, there's all, every cause is going to have an effect. Right. And from that, I was like, okay. And on that note, I don't want this shot. No bueno. Yeah. But you know, once you start well. off with well, <laughs> everything after well, I ain't even hear that. But you know, yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't want to go through no complications after taking no vaccine, man. Or, you know, the spirit theories of microchips in the damn shot and, it's so much going on, man. You never know. You know what I'm saying? Never. It's like, yo, the body naturally fights things off. Exactly. So you know, maintain a healthy immune system. Yeah. Of the power. Yeah. You know, you walk out of that shit like, yeah, I'm good. But like we got to stand Carl, like, strong. Yeah. We got to stand strong. We can't take yeah. it out of convenience. Well, they right. said that I can't get on the plane because I don't have. Well, all right, then don't get on the plane. Like, drive. Like, do something else. Like, be ready to be um, inconvenienced in order to not take this shit. Because yep. if you want everything to be easy peasy, they're going to try to make it hard for you to not take this shit. Yeah, can't right. fly. Well, we can't drive. We can't drive to Europe. But yeah, I'm I'm, I'm going to see what 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 uh what my man's in them got going on in the in the fake. <laughs> hey, we could get fake uh what you call it, insurance cards and all that shit. I, I see the, the fake COVID paper. Uh, I didn't even think about that. That's the COVID passport? They, that's the new shit going on. Look that up. Yeah. Won't mm, well, we do it? <laughs> guys. Act like those ain't going to be on the black market. <laughs> and right. that's on who? Never had a little laugh. <laughs> on the dark web. Dark web. Dark web. The black scene. <laughs> dark web, yo. It's a COVID-19 passport. Oh, uh, yeah. I'll pay for that. Fuck that. So is there is there any like any new hip hop that you fucking with or anything like that? Anything that Inspector Deck listening to or not really? Uh, I'm 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 staying in tune with a bunch of different people, man. Like you know, I, I rock with the Griselda Cats. Yeah, yeah. It's adrenaline pumping music right there. Facts. Um, you know, Joey's one of my guys. Static Selector. I've been following him. Check Together. Nick Grant's one of my favorite. Yes! Yo, he's so dope! Yo, that kid is step nice. On Nick, step on Nick Grant. Beast, that yeah, that know, kid is nice. That's my yeah. man. Uh, yeah. He's uh, one of them dudes that don't be on that flashy flashy <laughs> shit neither, you know what I'm saying? But he, it's like, he, he just it's, wordy as fuck. He just got flows and oh my god. It's beautiful, bro. You feel that. You feel that well, I like that Votto dude. Votto. Word. I don't yeah, Votto. Wow. Wow. I like Vado and the other uh Conway. I, they're all Griselda. That's, That's all the Griselda group, right? Vado not v Vado is uh, like is like the Harlem guys. I like that. I like that Vado dude. You know about the man Stove God cooks. You up on that? Yeah, yeah. I heard of Stove God. Uh the drought, check him out. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, yeah, man. I, I try to keep in tune with a lot of the the younger ones coming up, saying like more than more so than dudes that's already in tune. But I do, I do rock that Buster joint. I got Buster in the, in the whip. I got um, who else? I got in the whip. I still be throwing back to like Black Star, mm -hmm. most Def. That album is crazy. Yeah, uh, Black Rob's first album is crazy. I still got classics and. Too. We're like we're like old jazz heads. <laughs> what do you feel about like trap music and and you know this drill and you know all of that like pop? And it's, it's different. I, I like what Pop Smoke was doing. I guess it's his voice. Me too. Yeah, mm. like, oh, she like the way that I move. Right. Yeah. It's crazy. Cause, cause he like, sound like a man. That's why. <laughs> so like, most of us do so sound so like so little bird chest skinny jean wearing motherfuckers. Everybody's like, uh, oh yes, uh, Rome streets. I see somebody put Rome streets in the in the comments. Yes, Rome streets is hard, and that's the homie too. That's yeah. a little nephew. That's a little yeah. nephew right there. 
on streets. Yeah, there's a lot of streets, a lot of people that I can name, man. But I, you know, there's there's a couple that stand up. I'm trying to think. I think of it as we go along, but like I said, Nick Grant is one of my one of my favorites, though. I, I heard enough from him to be yeah. He's he's, he's he's nasty. There's there's a lot of trap music out there, man. Like I can't tell nobody how to make this shit. Uh-oh. If I was nah, because you know. If I'm growing up in motherfucking Fifth Ward, Texas, you know what I'm saying, and and, and that's the shit around me, then I'm gonna grow up and I'm gonna be catering to that. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, you know what I'm saying, like I'm a, I'm gonna duplicate what's surrounding me. So they in tune with what's what they surround us, and that's where they at. You know what I'm saying, like you know, you go to you go to Little Rock, Arkansas, them little niggas that's out there with nine millers would extend those clips legally, you know. <laughs> They out there, and we ain't talking about the niggas that ain't got it legally. So it's like they live in that shit. They live in it. Chicago living it. Drill music. That's what they doing. Drilling niggas. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But it's like pop. When I look at Pop Smoke, because he's one of the most familiar ones, he on his way. Like I'm saying, you know, when you hear somebody, you can tell like, yo, he's different. Yeah, you gonna love him. Yeah. So I, I knew that when I heard um OT like he, he definitely had a good trajectory. Like you could tell, like he was about at some point he would have got the the knucklehead out of him and and, yeah, and, and would have evolved and it, it's unfortunate we ain't we ain't get to see that. Yeah, he was getting co-signed by a lot of official mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, and that's all it really takes. Like if you know the public see like yo, this dude, I respect him, he respects yep. him, I respect yep. him. You know, and, and Nipsey Hussle is another one. You know what I mean, like I watched a lot of old footage on him. I didn't know who he really was at the time when he passed. Just like Pop Smoke, I had to go back and research them. Then doing the research, doing my homework, I was just like, damn. He's it's like it's like a it's almost like a Biggie and Pop type of thing. A New York nigga and a West Coast nigga dying like how they died. Right. Saying it's, it's almost the same comparison. I was just like, damn, like, you no. Know? And in this state of hip hop, going back to what I said earlier, like, damn, that's deep. Yeah, it's great. Right. That's why I choose to be like, yo, man, especially at 50. I'm 50 now. So you hear any music from me, man? I'm trying to, I'm trying to enlighten people. I'm trying to educate people in some kind of fashion, bro. I'm not trying to kill you. You know what I'm saying? I want you to live. I want to live. I want to see my kids grow up. This shit is music, man. Good for you. Me personally, I'm smacking bitches back to righteousness. Good for you. Smacking bitches back to righteousness. Yeah, I'm just saying, as far as in my life, you know. Nah, I, I, I'm just, I'm, you know. Yeah, I'm at a stage where it's like, like it don't mean nothing. You know what I mean, like, you're, yeah. You're, I mean, to be honest, right now with the. The, with the way things are going in the world, like it's almost like you playing yourself with money phones and this and that. Like, like even the dude that got the PPP loan and who got like two, three million dollars in loans and went out and and bought a bought a Maybach. Like, dude, you know how harder you could have stunted if you'd have actually started a real business and put some people's on, like. You that would have been way more G than whatever little look you get and showing off riding down the street with a Maybach. And you look crazy because everybody technically in the house quarantining. Where are you going in the Maybach? The club yeah. closed, the bar closed. Where you going? What you doing? Now, I'm just stunting. But you know, that's that's what I'm talking about. Like just getting out that mentality. Like, you know, being in Wu Tang 25 years of this shit, man. We done we done beat up and stomped out. Hundreds of motherfuckers. I done got my ass whipped a million times. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm lucky to be alive before rap. <laughs> Coming from Staten Island Park Hill and all the shit I've been through. So it's like, yo, at this stage of life, man, I, I can care less if I'm the richest nigga or if I'm the flyest nigga or if I'm the coolest nigga. Nigga, I'm, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm good. I'm, I'm handing my businesses to my kids. I don't need no Maybach. Let them have a the Maybach. They'll buy that shit when they get older, and there'll be something fly than that at that time. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, I'm not into that, man. Y'all can have that. Y'all, 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 y'all hitting each other eight times to the face with AKs. 
over a fucking chain, yo. Gosh, not you. even, not I'm even not. over social media. Mm. Yeah, whatever of over your ex. You know what I'm saying? Like all that shit that we be considering gangster shit don't really be gangster shit. Man. Gangster shit be like when the Black Panthers form. You know what I'm saying? To, to fight off the fucking oppression and started putting kitchens in the hood and feeding people and patrolling the hood. You know what I'm saying? Like that's gangster shit. Like even the gangsters like John Gotti was out there blocking the streets off, having neighborhood days in Brooklyn. Right. Real shit for the people, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, yo, man, we call gangster shit murdering the nigga. Like, yo, I just popped this nigga five times in his head. I think it was uh, who was it? M- M- I think it was NBA Young Boy that said, uh, f- "Fuck all that, uh, fuck all that fist fight shit. You you ain't you ain't a real man unless you shooting niggas." No. It's- this is this is what our this this is what our babies are being uh conditioned to believe. That's what I was that's what I'm getting at. It's like if that's how he feels, that's cool. But if you know you got shorties and youngsters listening to you, you gotta be careful what you put out there, man. And not to mention, like, yo, karma is a motherfucker. Karma got GPS, yo. Half the niggas that be talking that shit, they come back on. It. You no, know, the gangsters nigga on, on record is probably fighting the case right now with some shit he said. Max. Yeah. So for some shit he said on Vlad. <laughs> for some shit he Vlad. said on the record. <laughs> said on your mixtape, you know, wherever you at, mm-hmm. man. But what the duty of the police and detectives and all that is to investigate. Well, there's motherfuckers that are sitting here watching this video right now, waiting for me or you or any one of us to say the wrong shit. I'm saying, yo, I I knew shit was real when Kim went to jail. Like I don't even think people realize like the actual logistics of her case. Like she actually she did a bid for saying she ain't know somebody who was in the shout out credits of the album. That's that's when I knew the hip hop police was real. Yeah, they real. Like you know, and and they watching man. It be the it be the dude that he got the chain on. He iced out. He all mm-hmm. that. That random motherfucker that be in your dressing room. You done what you done looked at him twice already. Don't know weird. where he don't know where he came from. He just yeah, slithered yeah. on in. Yeah, you looking for somebody to vouch for him and shit. Mm, like, yo, who who man's is this? Man's who man's who man's is this? Yeah, we know who you are, man. So now we talking about dumb shit. Now. They in the comment right now. Yo, who who man's is that? <laughs> <laughs> right. Who man is that? Like, yeah, it's always that random. I be watching out. Tight, nigga that come off of you weed and be offering you shit. Hey man, I got some. Nah, yeah. Um, yes, yes, Ty Lee. That that's what uh Kim did a bid for. She she was she did a bid for perjury because she got on the stand and said she didn't know someone who was actually mentioned in the credits of her album. That's that's how she called her perjury charge. Yep. Yeah. That's that's, that's how the hip hop police is coming. I think they had seen her in a flick with him too. Yeah, it, it was. It was. I yeah. think it was like album credits. Mm-hmm. Might have been like you know album stuff. At least she ain't snitched, you know. No. She was like, nope. I don't know. Don't know. So that's, that's my man. I know him, but shit, I, I don't know. Yeah. You know those to her. She she took it like a G. Came home and then she back. Like you know what I mean? Like a lot yeah. of people in that position and it not only tell on. The other person would tell on other shit. Right. Too much, bro. <laughs> you know? She like, nope, I don't want your water. Stop trying to get me to touch the glass. You can do shit with my fingerprints. <laughs> you got people that's like, hey, do you know him? And, and they like, yeah, I know him. He be with such and such. Well, who's such and such? Oh, well, that's such and such. You know? <laughs> now you're telling on another nigga. You know? So, I don't know, man. It'd be some first 48 shit going. Show. Nice. What, what's 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 the most people you think you ever performed in front of? Me myself. Uh, I mean, with Wu Tang, yo, I, I think we did like at least a buck twenty. Damn. Uh, Kemp Festival. Mm. Hip hop Kemp. Yeah. Kemp. That shit. Bananas. I think. Yeah. Where, where is that at? In Germany or something? Nah, it's Prague. 
Right. I, I did hip hop camp with uh who I forgot who um I think Common somebody I forgot who was supposed to headline it. I just did it like maybe like two years ago. No, I'm no the 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 splash festival. I I, I opened up for y'all one time for the splash festival in Germany. I that remember. was that, that was uh that might have been eighty. Damn. That might have been. That, that, that might have been the 120. That was big. <laughs> Woo! Not everyone, I remember seeing you there. That was yeah. that 90,000. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. I mean, you know, that was the stars of the show. It was overseas for some reason. Like all the biggest, like, I think of the biggest I might have did, like 50,000, some shit like that. You know what I mean? Like, but that's that's because they just yeah, love that. That's just. Crazy. They just love and appreciate hip hop culture. Why you think shit? I I'm like <laughs> I live overseas practically. Yeah, that so I I've had to I've had to really just sit back and and kind of assess the situation. Like yo, that it might be it might be a wrap for that for a minute. Yeah, yeah. I I know. I believe what is it? They're trying to get us to herd immunity, where sixty percent of the globe. Has to be vaccinated before it, I guess, before it's like deemed effective. That's game, yo. That's yeah, just it's so whack shit. Game. Game. I mean, whatever it is, I'm I'm hoping the other sixty hurry up, because <laughs> I really would like to go resume shopping in Milan. I'm sorry, Bill sorry. Gates, you a bum, Bill Gates, you a bum. Milan. Yeah, that's so many people that miss that right now, huh? <laughs> Word. Like yeah, you know everything got this shit got everything so jacked up, man. And we like this, you know, this is us right now. Like, you know, everybody got to do things on Zoom or podcasts or, or you know FaceTime and things like that. Like, you can't see your family. Like they, they stopping people traveling, they turning you around, making you quarantine in certain cities. You know, business, small businesses are closing, big businesses are closing. You know, I got yeah. a building that was lit across the street for me. I done watched it little by little since like March of last year. Every, every moving out, moving out, moving out. Building's damn near empty now. It's like, yo, it's you know, uh, you know, it's hard to say when the money stop, but the bills don't stop. You know what I'm saying? Like, still, right? I'm just like that. <laughs> so you gotta make up ways to improvise. If you own a building, your best bet is like, yo, all right, get everybody out the building, maybe sell the building or something. Like that. You know, it's, I watch. Certain my favorite restaurants are closed now. You know, like everything is just it's forcing us to be a different type of person. So You're like, right. No, I didn't say Vado was in Griselda. Uh, I didn't they, say they, that. They, they, no, they, but it, it did sound like you were saying. I'm like Conway. Hey. I said Conway. No, you said Vado. You were saying yeah. Vado and Conway. You was like no, I too. said I like I like Vado, and I said. And I like Conway. Conway is part of Griselda. And then you said they're in Griselda, aren't they? No, no. I said, I said no. I said Conway is in Griselda. I know Vado is separate from that. Uh oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it did sound like it, but I got you. I, I was like, no. Um, yeah, that's for the dude that said that. Take that out of here. Uh, you, you ain't hear me say no bottles from Harlem, baby. First of all, first of all, first of all, <laughs> whoever said that is probably just started listening to hip hop. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Brand new ass. Fuck out of here. So, Deck, what, 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 you got, what you got on deck, Deck? Like, what's what's next for Deck? You got any uh projects that you dropping on? I mean, yeah, definitely, man. I'm working on this next Zarface project. We might make it um a Zarface versus Wu Tang project. You know, oh. wait, uh, some brothers involved in it. I know I can probably at least get half of the clan at, at this point. Right. Well, that's that ghost face shit there. Yeah. You know, yeah. Man, the czar face shit. Yeah. Ghost, that's my brother. I know I can count on ghosts. Ghosts ghost is. Ghost, ghost be putting out. Ghost what? still dropping the crazy albums. Yeah. Always putting out shit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Keep it consistent, man. You know, like, like I said, man, like, you know, once you get. Once you get that platinum in the game, man, you pretty much off on your own. You know what I'm saying? It's like for me, it's still been uphill, but you know, I'm dropping what I gotta drop. I'm working on another untitled project right now with um tracklib.com. Just using uh trying to bring samples back. We're gonna album using um samples. 
it's a website that allows you to clear samples. Yeah, I know about track list. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. uh, if you're out there, y'all check that out. But yeah, doing a project with them, just keeping you know some hip hop live and shit. You know, keep right. Going. And uh, you know, other than that, man, you know, I'm I'm making more investments. I'm getting into the marijuana business. Mm-hmm. I can and um, I'm getting into the marijuana business like a couple of my other brothers. You know what I'm saying, and um, you know, look forward to that. And I'm working with a company called Coyote Cannabis out in Massachusetts. Um, you know, it's, it's fully recreational out here. And um, you know, I'll be branching out to like Maine. I'm working this angle first, amateurs and all that as they pass these laws. Um, and then I'll make it to like Colorado, or West Coast, and things. Yeah, just getting my feet wet. You know. Oh, I'm trying to get Yo, niggas is about to start rumors. Look, it's Vado and Zar face. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, about to, we about to leave like by tomorrow. What Vado joins our face? What? <laughs> right. What Conway's and Zar face? One. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Shout out to Conway, man. Speaking of Conway, he jumped on Zar face, man. Before, before they really. Before the world really knew who Conway was, I heard him. Like, this motherfucker is crazy, and you know we reached out for him to get on the first uh, face out. Shout out to him for that. Dope. Well, that's what's up, man. Um, man, I, I think we've uh, we've about done it. Yes, sir. What's up, man? Just want to make sure my audio was good. Yeah. Oh did. man, the guy, right. first of all, the so guy went good. out and and bought the the fucking. He went and got because the fucking roadcaster and shit out this motherfucker. He can hit up his own sound effects if he wants to right now. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, the left track. Oh, damn. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Hey, okay, ready, ready? I want you to do the laugh track when I say something. All right, here's Richard Pryor. Man, you guys have to suck my dick. I'm all late and shit. You ever, okay, ready? You ever see niggas at the, you see them white boys at the Capitol? Them some crazy motherfuckers, Jack. <laughs> yeah, I hit you with the rim shot. I hit the, it's the rim shot. <laughs> right? Hey, take my wife, please. Then you go. This is fun, though, man. I'm, I'm going to learn this one. They're going to have me do my podcast. <laughs> I'm trying to learn the podcast. Like, that's my podcast, right? <laughs> A lot of times when 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 Digger tells a story, it's just like, oh damn, damn, <laughs> damn, <laughs> damn, damn. Our stories are. Mo- oh wait, is that? <laughs> say- I oh, say, say, hold, hold up. up. You yeah. are more long winded than I, I am. <laughs> I just had the effect. At least my damn. stories are fun. Damn. Jamar gets all serious. He's the, he's the fun police. Jamar, you know Jamar takes five minutes to ask a question. Come on, Jerry. The trigger. Oh, no, no, actually, I get I get accused of, of being a long of taking a long time to ask the question. No, you have two part questions. My, my, yeah, I I have two part questions, and my question is always going to include a story about me first. <laughs> right, you love me some bigger. <laughs> I love me some me, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about me before I get to you guys. <laughs> um um. Jack, what's your what's your uh what's all your social media and all that type of shit? Where can people like uh oh, yeah, yeah. I don't even post much, bro. Like I I be tapping out the matrix. I'm like Neo, man. I'm in and I'm see out. I told you that's what did that see respect that you don't like you, that's you. You just yeah, I'm in and out, bro. I be feeling like AJ <laughs> Smith is on me, you know what I'm saying? So I, I, I be I be aware of shit. So. But, but nah, y'all can check me out on Facebook, the real inspector or at rebellion twenty twenty. Rebellion dot twenty twenty. What's that? Uh, what's that? It's my, it's my Facebook. Okay. What about uh, IG? Rebellion twenty twenty. What and, about uh, your IG? Instagram is ins underscore t a g r a m s. Oh damn! Ins what? So it's spelled like Instagram. Okay. S, and then there's a underscore between the S and the T. So it's ins underscore t a g r a m s. I was trying to jack Instagram's followers. <laughs> <by two>. <laughs> <laughs> and it worked a little bit too, you know. Okay. But um, and Twitter is uh, 
inspected that quote. But yeah, check me out, man. I I, I rarely post, but when I do post, man, I try to post to keep me entertained. You know? yeah. um, one, one last question for you, Deck. Would you consider doing a spinoff of your character from the series? And with you know, with you really overseeing the the creative control of it and and telling your story the way you want it told. I mean, of the Hulu series. Yeah, that would be dope. Yeah, if they gave me control for maybe like two or three episodes to squeeze my shit in there. But you know, I had a talk with the writers for season two. So I was able to give them a couple of ideas and try well, to- well, even, well, well. Aside from the aside from the the story uh, arc that they have for that, you right. just doing like your own like because I could see that I could see everyone kind of branching off and getting like a, a spinoff yeah. of some capacity. Which is that something you could see yourself doing? And definitely, and, definitely. I get that. That, that would be dope. Like oh shit, you know the flood and stuff like that. That that would be uh, super right. dope. I, I, I'll have y'all with me in Newark at Zanzibar. And hey, the and all the shit that I was doing before rap. You know what I'm saying? That ain't in the Hulu series. See, you know? see, that's what I'm talking about. Who who wouldn't want to see that? I would. I would love to see that. That's dope. I mean, that could be done. That's mass appeal. You know, like um, mass appeal been doing good. Some good. No, that's not mass appeal. That's imagine. Um, okay, they do some good work, so you know that's something that I could, you know, I, I I'll give you the plug for that. So yo, you know, Digger okay. got the guest appearance in that, you know. Okay. <laughs> they put that together. Yeah, I, I've been on a roll lately. I'm like three for three now with cranking out these series ideas. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm gonna need some. I'm gonna need some like. They said Digger need to be a producer. I'm gonna need some production producer credit. Maybe got to get you a couple of points on that. You know? so Word. Consultants or something like that, you know? Hey. That would be dope. Like, that would be dope to have everybody spin off into their own into their own world. Like, right. Why not? Like, the there's a movie called Vantage Point like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's like a force. Oh, and, and it's dope. Imagine yeah. it show like eight different. Every, everybody's perspective of some assassination oh, yeah. attempt. That was a dope. Uh, concept. No, nah, that would be so well, ill. It's the science of going into different chambers. Now we're going into the deck chamber and we really yeah. like yeah. analyzing that side of the story. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, sure. But whether that happens or not, man, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a book before I'm done. Before I hang okay. up, man, my book is called From Pawn to King. Um, I've been working on it for a long time. I may put it in the paperback or audio book or both. Um, but yeah, that's that's going to be the complete story of me um you know i know y'all read you guys book and you guys all oh, deck was in the window deck wasn't getting no ass all types of stupid shit this nigga was saying that's my brother i love him <laughs> <laughs> you gotta let niggas know what the real story is you know what I'm saying? deck like, was in the window <laughs> you know, yeah, i was in the window like you know, watch this shit happen nigga i got more felonies than the whole fucking clan bro <laughs> we'd love to hear it but um, you know, hey, who got the most? Who got who got the most seeds? Was it Dirty? Yeah, I believe Dirt Dog is Dirty. Got the most yeah. seeds. Yeah, yeah. Mm, 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 mm. yeah you know, it's great shit. Yeah. But you know, other than that, man, yeah, from Pawn the King is gonna tell the real story of INS the Rebel. Okay. That's what's up. Let's work on that adapted screenplay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah man yo good looking for y'all have me on the show man yes, deck thank you for coming uh, by right. two we, hours baby we appreciate oh yeah right on the nose too we appreciate you coming through um you know we we dub you a godcast vip that's right Godcast general and you can just barge in the room any fucking time you feel like it <laughs> he got his own Ooh, got my podcast baby. Got his own shit. yeah that's what i'm saying um yeah we need to get up man we need to do some work we both on the island and shit like that i got these beats i got the studio over here too you got your studio over there that's um definitely definitely we'll link next time i come up i'll be up around. you guys ever worked together before no i'm not no. i i beat you i beat you we got a song I, together I, 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 uh, Capadon was okay. over here. 
Cabba Don came over here and did some shit. We we got a song together produced by Apollo Brown. I beat you. Gotta get Godfrey involved on the track. So too. you know, some if oh, you yeah. got some in between track stuff, you know, you know, character wise, let me know, man. Come on, yeah, let's see. I saw oh, the Trump God. video too, man. It's you like know. what Chris Rock did with uh, Buster's new album. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Good. Yeah, that's the word. That's word. Did you did you do that. Hey, let me know? Hey, let me know. Hey, hey, have you heard Have you heard Godfrey do uh Rizzo? <laughs> No, I heard him <laughs> Trump today. I was crying when he said, uh, the, the Lord is my German shepherd. The, the, <laughs> Lord my, the Lord is my German shepherd. It's one of my greatest. I love the Psalms. The Psalms are great. Psalms. I love Psalms. They're great. They're great. Inspector Deck, I think you're great. I think you're a great member. But I could have been a way better rapper than you. I know me. I'm the most rappiest guy you'll ever see. That's a promise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's him all day. No that's one knows what that's to do, right? Let me hear. Let me hear some. Let me hear some RZA real quick. Oh, when RZA's like, "Yo, man, what's up? Bong bong, what's up, man? You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> bong bong. That's bong, what we, we do that all day. That's all we do. We was work on that shit, man. Mathematic, you know what I mean? Well, <laughs> bong bong. Yeah, bong, bong. bong. Yeah, that's, 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 I haven't heard nobody uh, uh, do RZA yet. That's a good one. I, I was I was uh, during the verses, man, because you know we got me, we got Ari Spears, you got all the guys that imitate. So we was watching. And I just punt up, came out with the. I said, man, I think I could do. I think I could do RZA. And I was like, Yo, no, nah, man, word up, man. I'll, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. You, you can't it. hear me. You can't hear me. Can you hear me? I'll be right back. <laughs> Not can you hear me? I <laughs> like, can you hear me? All right, all right, bong bong, all right, my man. Bong bong, yeah, you said the cycle with the now nah, means. <laughs> yeah, I, I like uh, the, y'all kill up this. Uh, the other guy, Jay Farrow. Yeah, man, and whenever we do that, I was on uh, a call with you know Roland Martin. Hey, you guys, everybody know Roland Martin, right? Yes, Roland Martin. Yeah. Uh -huh. So Roland Martin, I'm on his show, and so he knows I do Shannon Sharp. So. Roland Martin goes, he tricks me. He goes, Godfrey, I just want to show you something, Godfrey. I got a friend that wants to talk to you. I'm like, who? And he goes, my friend Shannon Sharp. I was like, oh, hell. Shannon Sharp comes on there, and he goes, Sh Godfrey, do Shannon for Shannon. You know, I'm a Shannon will kill me. This is what He goes, and then Shannon, and Shannon goes, I used to be upset when people imitated me but I now I realize it means you've gotten to a level where people admire you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was doing Shannon, and <laughs> yeah, I, I did Shannon. I was like, hey, Skip, listen, Skip, I'm going to tell you something, Skip. You got to understand, Skip, that the NFL, if you ain't practicing, Skip, they're going to kick you out, Skip. So, <laughs> wow. And, wow. And, 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 and Shannon goes, yeah, you got me. I, I got to admit, you got me. I, 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 I used to get mad, but I don't get mad no more. I said, okay, uh, Phil. That's a, that's a, uh, you got him. You got him nailed down. Yeah, I got him down. Like, <laughs> Look, Skip. How are you doing? Skip. Skip. Skip, you got to have that lift. Skip, lift, Skip. Skip. I'm going to tell you right now, Skip. I mean, whatever, whatever. We NFL. And if you ain't there, Skip, if you're not there for the practice, I don't even see why you get paid. <laughs> Damn, you got him. You got him nailed, bro. That's crazy. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Man. I got that. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, Jack, this was great, brother. Yes, sir. Yeah, Thank salute, you man. once Seven, again for, uh, for joining us on the Godcast, man. And uh, don't be a stranger. Definitely, let's have you back soon. That's what's up, man. Appreciate y'all. So, appreciate your brother. presence, brother. Ladies and gentlemen, Inspector Deck. Yes, yes sir. Wu-Tang forever! Wu-Tang forever, baby! <laughs> <laughs>